Hello everyone, I'm Naveen Agarwal and welcome again to my weekly video update. Now this video is part of my series, uh, a newly launched series on COVID-19 treatments. And today I will talk about Remdesivir from Gilead. You may have heard about Remdesivir in the news. It was all over the place because this was also one of the treatments given to President Trump when he was diagnosed with COVID-19. And my perspective in these videos is from the viewpoint of an informed patient. We want to learn as much as we can from technical literature, not chasing news media stories. We want to understand the benefit risks. We want to understand what our options are, what kind of questions to ask so we can make an informed decision if unfortunately we find ourselves in a situation like that. So in this video, I'm going to cover three key questions. The first one is about understanding the mechanism of action. How does this particular treatment work? The second is to look at some of the results that just got published based on a clinical trial. And these results were published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And these results show us uh, and give us an insight into the benefit risk of this particular treatment. And we want to understand the safety risks. Okay, so uh, in terms of the mechanism of action, it really is an antiviral medication. And the way it works is by inhibiting the RNA polymerase enzyme. That RNA polymerase enzyme is responsible for replication of the viral RNA. And that's what it makes the virus grow fast. And the idea is if we inhibit the activity of that particular enzyme, we can slow down the reaction or we can slow down the growth of the virus. And that's how it works. And they were able to demonstrate this through in vitro studies uh, using SARS coronavirus. They also did animal studies where um, the non-human primates who were infected with the MERS coronavirus, that's an older coronavirus, showed tremendous result even within 12 hours where they were able to see a lower viral load in the lungs and also lower damage to the lungs. And we know that the coronavirus attacks the lungs. So in principle, they were able to show that this works, but we didn't have information from human subjects uh, because very little information was available up until now. So in this particular clinical study, they uh, looked at 1100, about 1100 patients, half and half, half placebo, half uh, remdesivir treatment. And this was double blinded randomized clinical trial. Uh, in, in, among this patient population, 80% of the patients were recruited in the US, 15% in Europe and 5% in Asia. So it was a pretty global in scope. Uh, median age was about 59 and they were all hospitalized patients. 40% of them were above the age of 65. But more importantly, a little bit over half of these patients had two or more pre-existing conditions such as hypertension, diabetes and obesity. And at baseline, when the treatment began or the placebo treatment began, they were uh, pretty ill. They were on oxygen. So the way they evaluated a patient's condition was on an eight point scale, one to eight. One being you are out of the hospital, perfectly normal, as normal as you can be, no limitation on your activities, eight being death. And along the way, they had a scale to describe the condition of the patient. So about 40% of these patients at baseline were at a score of five. So they were receiving supplemental oxygen, but not as bad as having to be on a ventilator. Okay, so this was the design of their study. They were uh, interested in looking at the rate of recovery over a 28 day time period after enrollment. And their secondary outcome was improvement on day 15. So that was a static day 15 outcome. They were also looking at the mortality rate, obviously, and uh, adverse events and uh, safety issues. Okay, so what did they find? Well, overall, they are reporting that um, the recovery rate ratio compared to placebo was 1.29. So roughly about 30% improvement in the recovery rate. Uh, recovery time frame, a median of 10 days versus 15 days for placebo. So a five-day reduction in recovery rate. Their best result was among patients who were at the score of five at baseline. 
And in those patients, they saw a recovery rate ratio of 1.45, so roughly about 45% better. And the improvement in the number of days was, they, they were at seven compared to nine in placebo, so about a two-day improvement. So this is quite significant. Uh, their worst result was really among patients who were at a score of seven at baseline. And these are the really seriously ill patients who are on a ventilator or who are an ECMO machine, which is an external blood purification machine. So they're very, very severely ill. And that was the worst result where uh, really they didn't see too much of an effect and uh, the recovery rate and survival rate was pretty low among those patients. Okay, how about the secondary outcome? On day 15, they did see an improvement in, uh, in conditions and their odds ratio was about 1.5 compared to uh, placebo, so good improvement. Mortality rates, at day 15, there was significant improvement, about 7% versus 12% for placebo, so half, nearly half the patients they were able to save. And overall mortality was about 11 to 15, 11% for treatment and 15% for placebo, so not as, as much uh, gain because it's driven by seriously ill patients at enrollment. So the bottom line is they're able to save some, but not all. And this is an important thing to keep in mind is that as more and more people get into the hospital, more and more people will die because the mortality rate, even though is about 11% with treatment, it's still pretty high. So we have to worry about that. Okay, that's as far as the mortality is concerned. Now adverse events. They did observe adverse events, 25% in the treatment group versus about 30% in the placebo group. Uh, but it's not clear to me if these adverse events was, were, were because of the treatment-induced adverse events or the treatment was not as effective as it could be among other patients. Uh, now, if you read the EUA and the data sheet for the product, there are some some known adverse effects, uh, particularly around liver function. So they, they are supposed to monitor that during treatment, but this data was not broken out. Suffice to say that there was a reduction in the frequency of adverse events. So they are making a conclusion, kind of understanding that maybe the treatment is slowing down the progression of the disease. So if you catch it early, treat it early, when the patients are on the lower end of this eight point scale, you will improve their chances of survival and you will improve their recovery rate. Okay, now about 9% of the patients had severe respiratory failure on treatment compared to a slightly higher number on placebo. So there's no guarantee that even when you receive the treatment, you will not have a severe respiratory failure. So effectiveness is there, but not conclusively proven and it's not always effective. So we need to learn a little bit more. Let's talk about benefit risk. Uh, this is meant for patients who are already in the hospital and if you do nothing, they will more like most likely progress towards a worse situation and not survive. So it's better than not having anything. And that's exactly why I think the emergency use authorization is there in place. Uh, it has recently now been expanded to be uh, available for everybody, even pediatric population. But that's one reason to be worried about because this clinical trial did not have any data on patients who were 18, below 18 years of age. So we still don't know. However, this is an option worth having because you want to save as many people as you can but it is definitely not a cure-all treatment you need more you need more than this uh, so overall assessment my assessment is benefit risk is very favorable we need to learn more and hopefully more data will come out in the future so i hope this is useful to you let me know how you like this format would you like to learn more about this topic or any other related, related topic send me a comment or drop me a note on LinkedIn. I would love to hear from you. I hope all of you are staying safe in this difficult time. We still have a pandemic going on. And I really wanna thank you for your interest and attention.